Michael and I have been friends for more than 20 years. Yeah. And uh, I got into this space, you know, a little bit earlier than he did and was very interested in it. Um, and I would bring it up and talk about it. But, you know, he was running a company with a couple thousand people and com- ha- in a very, very competitive software, you know, business software space. Yeah. And wasn't interested, didn't, there wasn't he a, didn't like it, right? He was actually against it. I don't think he didn't like it. I mean, yeah, there was the tweet he was against it or something. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is it just he didn't he didn't see the need for it. Certainly there wasn't a need for it in his world, right? Yeah. And then during the pandemic, we were kind of quarantining it at his place where <laughs> not a bad, bad a bit, place to quarantine. A lot better than my apartment, <laughs> I, I promise you. So we were we were quarantined there and just kind of as we do for, you know, 20 years, discuss politics, economies, investments. That's just kind of what we talk about. And so we're talking about this really interesting period that we're in where the government's going crazy, printing money, stocks are behaving in a way that we don't understand. And it was kind of in this context when the world wasn't making sense that he was more open to hearing about Bitcoin. And so he remembers me saying something like, you know, anytime there's like change like this, there's opportunity, big paradigm shift. We just have to find it. And then I went on to talk about Bitcoin, which I tend to do. And instead of like ushering me on to the next topic, he's like, tell me more about that. And I was like, what? Okay. So Cause you had been in, you'd been involved with Bitcoin and investing for how long? Yeah, at I, that bought, point? I bought my first Bitcoin in December, 2013. Okay. So I started out in seven years. This is seven years into. Yeah. I was investing in, um, I was a VC investing in internet related businesses. So when I saw Bitcoin, that was a big deal because the internet was really good for transmitting information, yeah. not so safely or securely, but email, pictures, stuff like that. And then when I saw Bitcoin at a conference, it was like, holy shit, we can transmit value safely and securely, and we don't even need a trusted intermediary. Like, these parties don't need to know each other, and that was like the big light bulb moment for me. So, but it was in that context that I didn't know that MicroStrategy at the time was sitting on $500 million in cash, and he was concerned that he's losing 10% yeah. of that purchasing power a year and was kind of in the background looking for solutions to that. Yeah. And so then it was in that context that when I brought up Bitcoin that we did as deep a dive as I was capable of. And then when he had sucked all the information out of my head, he was like, where can I find out more? And I kept pointing him to as many places as I could and then helped him get set up to, you know, kind of you know buy some and stuff like that. So, and then obviously the student quickly became the teacher. <laughs> He's one of the most amazing communicators. Like I study, I study yeah. Sailor, like I'll watch his videos and um, yeah. I just think he's I, I, so smart, so thoughtful in how he Thanks. shares the message because he isn't controversial and no. he just appeals to both sides and he's just very logical about it, really. Logical. He is. And he's like that on any topic. I mean, the topic du jour is obviously Bitcoin, but kind of the best thing from my perspective about him doing all the podcasts and stuff that he does, people always say to me, well, you know, what's it like being friends with Michael, you know, because he's such like, he's been an interesting figure for a long time, long before Bitcoin, relatively high profile. So I, you know, dinners, as you guys know, and, and meals is kind of just what you see on the podcast. So the best thing about him doing these podcasts is now you kind of get to share that with the world. And that's kind of the best part about, you know, being friends is you get access to the supercomputer for whatever's going on in your life and, and stuff like that. And you get really good opinions and you get it explained in a way that you can understand. And if it didn't sink in the first 10 ways it was explained, it'll get explained in 11, you know? So. Yeah. You're going to get it one way or another. He stays on top of everything. Like, he reads everything that comes out of Congress, he every does. legislative proposal, and I commend him for that because there's something new happening every day, and he's on top of it. No doubt about it. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, so do you feel responsible then for MicroStrategy being down? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, well, if Just you look at, if you look at MicroStrategy, since he started doing this MicroStrategy the closest thing to MicroStrategy performance-wise has been Google, which is up 50%, and in the same time, MicroStrategy is up 150%. When he started this, MicroStrategy had like a billion-dollar market cap, and now it's got an enterprise value of like seven billion. So, not bad. you know, not bad. I think he's <laughs> outperformed. I mean, gold is down like 16% since he yeah. started. Bitcoin's up 100% since he started. So. It's, he clearly made the right decision. 
Um, but so, you, no. so you do feel responsible for that? Decision? I don't feel responsible in any way for, be- <laughs> for better or worse. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have planted a seed and been a little bit of a catalyst. 